There was a big issue personally that I have with my mother and it's the fact that I kind of feel like in certain in certain ways she raised me up to be her son rather than her daughter. Um, I just feel like a lot of things weren't my responsibility. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah. I wanna and um I just I wasn't making the connection to why there was so much chaos in my life and why I didn't have anybody that I wanted to to reciprocate the love that I felt like I gave out. Um, I also didn't understand that I wasn't really giving out love to guys that I was dealing with or dating or talking to. Um, I didn't understand that like you have to be really, really careful about how you talk to guys, how you talk to men. Um, Cause I was the type where I just let anything fly out my mouth, especially when I'm mad. When I'm mad, like it's up, anything can come out my mouth. But um, I feel like all of those things just kind of are combined in the whole inner work thing that the manosphere taught me. Like you gotta do the inner work. And I don't wanna sit here like I'm a finished product. I still have a lot of work to do, but from where I was, I think I've changed quite a bit. And I'm moving in the right direction to where now if I get another Steve in my life, he's gonna marry me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's let's talk a little bit about because what what I try to do and you know a lot of people ask me like how do you <clears throat> how do you have so much patience and the reason I have so much patience is because I have a lot of grace and I try to understand the origin stories that lead people to become villains right in other people's lives so oh no <laughs> <laughs> oh no not the origin story no. <laughs> Well, as much as you, you want to give, right, um, what is it that you feel like turns, you could even speak generally, women into who you were that ran off Steve? Mm. I might have to personalize it this time. As, like I said, as much or as little as you want to yeah. give. Yeah. Uh, man. Well, I think it goes without saying that we don't talk enough about how single fatherhood affects us. Maybe that should have been my answer for what the minister taught me the most. Because, mm, like, you just don't understand how how much you lose from not having both parents in your house. Um, and it's just like, your mom can only do so much for you. Um, and in my situation, <clears throat> even, even my mom didn't have her dad like that. Damn. So, yeah. you know, he like she knew him and she'd see him now and then, but it wasn't like, you know, married, in the, in the household, living with her and everything. It was kind of like a holiday dad. Like I said, you know, you only see every now and then. Well, I had a holiday dad. She had more of like a weekend dad. He was a little bit more, you know, present in her life. But you're not going to know how to, how to deal with a man. And then in my instance, I have a dad. I have... Uh, my grandfather had died before I was born on my father's side. Didn't have my father. Um, I don't have a very big family, so I didn't have like a whole bunch of uncles or anything. So I didn't really get a lot of male interactions in my youth. So, it's, you know, it's just it's difficult. Like you don't. You don't really know how to do anything outside of. Fuck them and cook for them, like. And these are things that I'm still learning, but I've gotten a lot farther along than I was. Um, you just miss, <laughs> you don't know how to deal with the man. 
you don't know how to respect a man. Mm. You don't know how to communicate with that man. You don't know about their needs or y'all's needs and y'all's emotions and, you know, your feelings. And it kind of like sets you up to be selfish because all you understand is your point of view. All you know is everything from the woman's side. And I think in some instances it can even maybe like cause disdain for men a little bit too. Um, You might feel like all men are one way or you might feel like all men are like your dad. Like I know I had it real bad still to this day, the belief that men are selfish. Um, I know obviously now that that's not true for all men, you know, but I I believe that heavy, like a lot of men just are just selfish innately um, and self-serving. So that's a negative side effect of it. Um, And then it it leaves you unprotected to the world too, um, which is really bad because that's how you continue the cycle. So in my mom's instance, Jesus Christ, don't. (laughs) In her case. Oh, gosh. So she didn't have her dad. So... My father was much older than her when he got her pregnant. He got her pregnant in her teens, and he was like 29, I think. Um, and only, the only reason he was even able to get close to her was because she didn't have nobody to protect her. And that's like, that's just self-explanatory. Like, that just goes without saying. And it, it's just, it happens to so many girls that they don't have anybody, um, not even just to protect them, but in that way, but to say, for instance, you meet a guy that's not a predator, but he may have other issues. You don't really know how to vet that guy because you never had a guy to learn from or to watch right. or to vet your him yourself, himself. Um, so... There's just so many ways that it can go bad (laughs) and so many ways that not having a dad just negatively affects you. Let's say one day you have a daughter. Jiggly Jr. (laughs) Hopefully not. (laughs) Um, But what are some things that you will make sure um, to do not do provide for her, not provide for her, to make sure she doesn't inherit some of the same generational trauma that a lot of our women have because of this cycle? Well, I definitely just will try my hardest um, to be married before I have a kid. God willing, if it doesn't work out that way, I'll at least try to make sure that I have made a kid with a guy that has integrity and morals within himself to the point where he wouldn't abandon his responsibility and his kid. Um, And you mean like, how would I maybe like raise her up in ways that we could like end the cycle? Well, so basically I'm asking like, Mm -hmm. what do you think you needed? that you didn't get. She'll have her dad for sure. That's not, that's a non-negotiable. Um, but things that I would try to do differently, I would try to raise her with more structure. Um, hmm. Oh, it's coming to me. It's coming to me. Take your time. Take hmm. your time. There's no rush here. Take your time. I would raise her with more structure. I would probably try to have her around better influences than I was around. And that's no shade to anybody in my life. Um, there was a big issue personally that I have with 
my mother and it's the fact that I kind of feel like in certain in certain ways she raised me up to be her son rather than her daughter. Um, I just feel like a lot of things weren't my responsibility. Um, and I don't mean like in childhood. I mean, as I you know got into my late teens and as I got older, like I was working and you know, paying some of her bills and stuff and like helping her out in ways that kind of hindered me. And that's also one of the reasons why I went to college a little later is because I wanted to work and also help support my family. Um, so I definitely would not, will never put any of my kids through that, male or female. I would want to set them up in, in positions to where they have no choice but to be successful. Um, and I will also try to nurture their natural gifts or their natural talents, the things that they gravitate towards, um, to kind of push it in their heads to go for a life that's that you can feel good about, but also that you can fulfill your passion, you know, your calling, what you're meant to do. Um, But for sure, I would say the number one thing is they gotta have the other half of them. Um, Cause I just think it causes so much confusion when you don't. Like there's so, I don't even, since we, me and my father weren't close, I don't even know that side of my family. Like, I don't even know. I have so many cousins in Savannah that I don't know, I've never met because he wasn't there. Like, he didn't bring me around him. So, very big on just making sure that they understand, they know who they are and they know their identity and that it comes from both sides. Because I think, <laughs> like, I'm probably going to make mistakes too, you know? You know? But, I think if I can at least secure them that, they'll at least have more than what I had. And I think in my mother's situation, she only did the best that she knew how to do. Um, and she tried to put me in positions where I could be better off than even she was. So we've made a little progress. I mean, she was an 18 year old single mother. I haven't had any kids yet. so. Already there's a little bit of progress, so hopefully we can just keep the ball rolling and just learn from what the previous woman did. Like, I know my mother learned from her mother. Um, it was actually addicted to drugs, so that's why she was left unprotected and, you know, so many things happened to her. But if we could just make a little splash in the puddle, every generation, eventually we're going to get back right. Oh, Hopefully, I like that. No, no, that's that's the whole reason we're doing this. Yeah, that's that's the that's the one thing that keep like keeps me going and gives me hope. 